what is designing for flexibility? It's a challenge for us all, I think, at the moment. There's so much, so much content. Um, there's so many different tools, and I think it's about personalization. You know, it's about being able to take a range of tools around a particular learner. So our, our learner and being able to take those specific tools, but each one of these is a choice. So when I was, when I was in the classroom, it's having, being able to build this capability in or build this sort of resource into the classroom so that when children get the, to the point where they need to choose, that, that choice, that kind of moment where I, it's actually this choice that I need to make, it's that moment that it needs to be kind of built into the kind of classroom environment. Are those choices you've drawn out to do with um, just you know technology? Oh, I want to make a Wordle. Um, I mean, we see so many wiki spaces. Does mm. the world need another wiki space? You know what these are? These are just whatever tool suits that purpose in that moment. So, so let's take a specific example. Say you turn sort of teaching about data handling, then these could be I'm going to do it using a, a pen and a paper, and I'm going to do it using a ruler. I'm going to need a calculator, and or I might go on you know use Google tools, and it might be a, a particular technology one, or it might be something that really really specific that um, you've kind of learned a specific skill. Wh whichever it is, it needs to be a personal choice, and the flexibility comes with providing the kind of resourcing and the kind of skills within the curriculum to to allow that choice to happen. Where do students learn those core skills, that core content that's going to allow them to access and even begin to make those choices? Yeah, I think you've got to build this capacity into your curriculum. How? You've got to have time. I mean, how? how do you do it? Well, by actually giving children the opportunity to play and allowing them access to those tools in a time where there's no pressure. So we're not going to get, we're going to get, get any kind of marks or grades. We're not talking about that. It's just time to play. And so we play with each of the tools. We experience them with an, in a sort of non-threatening way. And then when it comes to ap applying those skills later down, further down the road, then they're going to be f much more free to make a choice that's more personal to them. How does a busy college or a school with a timetable mm. make time to play when it's the number one thing teachers say they don't have? Yeah, well, time is... Is, is, is a challenge for every teacher and they'll always start talking about it in whatever you do, whether you're talking about social networking or, or teacher professional development, they always say that time is the kind of key thing and that will always come up. So I think it's being realizing, I think the key thing here is, is, is having a realization that this choice is important and it's valid and it, building time into play, which whether it's a drawing uh, a chart or using a Google form, whatever the example it is, having time to kind of explore and play is valid. Right, so you, you're starting a new course for teachers. Mm -hmm. They only have time to learn three things. What three things would you teach them before throwing them into the lion's den? It's a challenge to think about that. Um, but for new teachers, I think one of the key things is understanding first, understanding their environment, the physical environment they're working in. So it, it's all about getting to grips with that first. So it's their own physical environment and that in terms of that also that let's talk about that in terms of our learning environment as well so what whichever space we're working in whether it's online or it's offline it's in a, it's in a room it's in a in a kind of an open plan classroom they've got to understand the physical environment because that will affect the children in the way that they learn that's number one number two let's put that one up there is about kind of looking beyond thinking about community so it's all about this is utilizing key social tools that are prevalent to actually connect with other other teachers who are also at the point of learning. And uh, number three, mm -hmm. hmm, the challenge for the third, I suppose it's, I know what it is. The third one would be about the continual learning, a commitment to learning all the time and knowing that it's just because they've finished their course, it's not going to be a point where everything stops. So learning is a continuous process and even teachers years into their career are continue, should be continuing to learn. There's an assumption if you want to do well and get the best examination results possible for your students, then you need to cover content first, and then if there's time, you can do some airy-fairy creative stuff. Mm. There's an assumption that you can't do student-led learning if you want to get great grades. If you want great grades, it has to be teacher-led, there has to be content-driven mm. from the word go. What do you think? I think um, the, the content, the vast content that we could be working with children need to have the skills in order to to adapt to be flexible to personalize that content they need to have some say in it they need to be able to 
filter. They need to be able to adjust and be flexible within that content. They need to take that content and be able to kind of break it into its pieces that most engage them. And so we need to be able to provide the curriculum that will be open enough to allow that choice and also the skills to filter that vast content into the pieces that are most individual to me.